place straddling the Danube in the heart of Central Europe Budapest is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. Nicknamed the Pearl of the Danube, homage to its spectacular architecture, and especially to this particularity that we don't see anywhere else, these famous open-air baths, a thousand-year-old tradition. In the city, there are over a hundred of them, the most famous of them, this neo-baroque palace of 6,000 square meters, the Sekimi. Built at the beginning of the 20th century, it houses nearly 21 pools fed by the city's thermal springs. Visitors immerse themselves all year round in water at 29 degrees. It's amazing. There are so many pools with different temperatures. There is good energy and in addition, the architecture is magnificent. We have the impression of finding ourselves in ancient times. The small pools with moldings on the ceiling are nice. Across the Danube in Buda, another institution, the Gellert. Built in 1918 in an Art Deco style, these terms attract tourists, but especially locals. This is a really, really stylish bath. That's what we came for, this blend of tradition and elegance. In total, 13 outdoor and indoor pools. This water rich in calcium and magnesium would have medicinal properties. That's why some people from Budapest even come here every day. The first time I came was in 1985. It was recommended to me by my doctor. Thanks to this water, I am in great shape. 20 minutes in water at 36 degrees, then 5 minutes in the one at 40. It's great for your health. But after nightfall, the atmosphere changes. Forget the relaxing atmosphere. The baths are transformed in an open-air nightclub. Celebrations like you don't see anywhere else, and what we call Sparties, that is to say spa parties. It's a great night, the best it can be. I love Budapest. The evening will last until dawn, freedom symbol that would conquer the Hungarian capital. Except that recently, headwinds blow on the pearl of the Danube. Identitarian and conservative movements that advocate a return to the Hungary of yesteryear. New must-see destination in Europe, Budapest is a city with two faces that is looking for its identity. Marked by its imperial past, wars, and 45 years of Soviet occupation, the city has begun a spectacular metamorphosis. Its exceptional architectural heritage, inherited from Austro-Hungarian Empire, attracts 4 million tourists every year. But many also come for its crazy side. In Budapest, all kinds of excesses are allowed. I've never seen anything like it. Memorable holidays, the biggest music festival in Europe. I didn't think I would do it, I did it. Even unique theme parks, Cold War atmosphere. I feel like a kid who has the best toys in the world. Here, tourists can drive tanks like in war. Except that behind this festive and carefree facade, the city is shaken by reactionary movements. The government led by Viktor Orban has passed several laws that deny the rights of homosexuals. I couldn't even take Tamara's hand on the street anymore. Some far-right movements are even openly homophobic. I think homosexuality should not appear on the street. Devotees of provocation, they even attacked each other to the global soda giant, accusing it of promoting pedophilia. According to them, the solution would be a return to traditional values of eternal Hungary. Another issue is that of the Hungarian nobility, forced into exile and plundered by the Soviet occupier. She wants to forget the past and tries desperately to recover its land and property. 
The communists took everything from us. I think not to give us back these castles. That is not right on the part of the Hungarian government. An unprecedented dive into this capital of Central Europe, torn between her past and the quest for her new identity. A surprise that Lucy, a 37-year-old French woman, will remind for a long time. It is 9 in the morning. In a limo, Mady picked her up and her friends at Budapest Airport. This French man living in Hungary has made it his business. It specializes in bachelor parties. The 10 girlfriends from St. Lo in Normandy called on him to bury Lucy's young life. The 37-year-old bank counselor is due to get married in a few weeks. Without telling him anything, his friends organized a crazy program for her. Aren't you tired? It's okay. What do you expect? To celebrate. <laughs> On the agenda are three days of celebration and very unusual activities. Budapest has become the capital of Europe for bachelor parties. More than 15 specialized agencies, like Medis, offer their services to fulfill the most unexpected desires of the bride and groom. For only 300 euros per person, air tickets, accommodation, and activities included. Our spouses went to Budapest together to party at the very beginning of our relationship seven years ago. In general, we understood that he had a good time. Revenge. I dreamed of my bachelorette party, and they didn't fail me there. Direction the city center. The organizer reserved an apartment on the top floor for them of a luxury residence. Welcome to Budapest. Thanks. Go on. Come on in. Oh, a bride. Welcome home. 170 square meters with four bedrooms and two bathrooms. We'll take baths all together. Is there a sauna? Yes, there is a sauna. There is a sauna in the background. It's incredible. The must terrace with a panoramic view over the rooftops of Budapest, a luxury that Lucy and her friends would never able to afford in France. The apartment only costs 200 euros per night, 20 euros per person. It's three times cheaper than in Paris. After the limo, La Pinger and her gossip girls, it couldn't be better. <laughs> if the girls chose Budapest, it's not just for its beautiful apartments. They are eagerly awaiting a one-of-a-kind attraction that promises strong sensations. For that, they called on Gaber. When this former Hungarian army gunsmith goes to his office, People in Budapest feel like they've come back 50 years ago in the communist era. Gaber is still riding in this Russian Jeep from the 50s. It is a very rare vehicle that is part of the history of Central Europe. This car is perfect for advertising my business and the period of history that I propose to revive my customers. The Cold War. Passionate about history, he created a leisure park dedicated to the Cold War. Located on the city's former airport, it traces the military history of the country from the 1950s to the 90s, when Hungary lived under the tutelage of the USR. Gaper brought together no less than 200 machines from the Hungarian army here. Welcome behind the Iron Curtain. Here, I am the dictator. D-442 troop carriers, T-55 tanks, rocket launchers, helicopters, or even MiG-21 fighter planes. A military arsenal inherited from the Soviet occupation. The Red Army occupied Hungary until 1991.
30 years later. Okay, gentlemen, Oak gentlemen follow me. These machines that made Europe shake today the joy of young tourists looking for strong sensations. The program is playing war while riding a tank. Or take off in a fighter plane. A hundred of them arrived here every day, curious to discover this colossal arsenal with which Gaber could besiege the city. It is a unique collection that is worth a small fortune. That's worth a few million euros worth of equipment. Today, for the same price, you can buy yourself either a Ferrari or a T-55 or a T-72 tank. It's up to you to choose. This tank would be worth 150,000 euros today. For a fighter jet, count twice as much. But Gaber and his associates made a deal by buying them three times cheaper 30 years ago with the fall of the USR. That's an anti-aircraft system. Our army is still using it. Here, it is an armored vehicle that was used to transport troops. The former soldier invested at the time because he was convinced that these spectacular machines would attract curious people and that he could make a lot of money. Basic rates to access the park and simply admire the equipment, 48 euros. For the highlight of the show, the chariot ride, it charges 30 euros for 15 minutes. I feel like a kid who has the best toys in the world. It is better to book because it has become the star attraction future newlyweds who are arriving from all over Europe, especially for this armory tour. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just boys who want to play in the war. We meet Lucy and her girlfriends there. I've been saying for a long time that I want to drive machines. Mehdi, the organizer of the weekend, does not want to disappoint them. So he signed them up for the Grand Thrill Special Tour. We are in the extreme, tank driving. They will be able to experiment with the T-55. It's a Russian tank. Russian manufacture, so something extreme. It's going to be fun. Here is the machine, a 45-ton juggernaut, the former flagship of the Russian army, which was still in operation 30 years ago, just like its pilot, George's a former colonel. Manly atmosphere. My nickname is George Gross Calvin. I was the best in the Hungarian army. Have you been to a war zone? It's top secret. No further questions. If I told you, if I, told you I would I have to kill you. <laughs> the girls climb aboard this tank, which has been somewhat equipped and transformed into a convertible. The turret has been dismantled for tourists to enjoy entertainment and sensations, like in a merry-go-round. Before we start, it's time for traditions. George's offers a toast to Palinka, a typical Hungarian brandy. <laughs> the tank may have been demilitarized, nevertheless, it is still an extremely dangerous weapon of war. But that doesn't stop George's, as always, to leave orders to tourists, like Lucy, who has no military experience. Right. To turn right, pull this lever. Oh, that's it. And turn right. Back. For the left, you push the other one. There you go left. That's fine. <laughs> go on, press the clutch. Go straight ahead. She's a great driver. It's like war. It's great. After this appetizer, Colonel George takes the wheel again to show them all the capabilities of his machine. Hang on. A roller coaster made in Budapest. While some remnants of the Red Army are still in use today to entertain tourists, it is not the same for monuments to the glory of communism. 
Lenin, Stalin, Engels, all these figures of communism have been relegated to a strange museum on a wasteland outside Budapest. We are in Memento Park, the Memory Park. The fall of communism between 1985 and 1989 was very sudden. Today, a group of Hungarian visitors has come to plunge back into this dark part of the history of their country occupied by the Soviets between 1947 and 1991. A Soviet soldier Look at this heavily armed, armed uh, USSR soldier. See, uh, uh, the machine gun in his hand. You, you can, can see his machine hand, gun and he is firmly uh, waving the flag see, of the Soviet the Union. The symbol of, uh, the Soviet Observe Union. his eyes as well. Look his he eyes, looks to the future very future proudly. So proudly. In 1991, Budapest decided to bring together its 41 monuments from the Soviet era here, previously erected in all strategic locations in the city. This is the Hungarian soldier of the Red Army. This statue was to the right of that of Stalin, on one of the most important squares in Budapest. Hungary is the only country that has not destroyed these statues. They were kept to remember and learn from the past. This impressive and unusual place attracts today many nostalgic people for the Eastern Bloc. I am a photojournalist. At the time, I photographed these statues while they were still in town. It was not such a difficult time. All public housing today in Budapest were built during socialism. The price of an apartment back then is worth the price of a square meter today. I was born in 1945 and have always seen these statues. Am I nostalgic? No, I don't think so. But the good thing at the time was safety. Everyone had a job. We didn't have a lot of money, but we were living well. But in Budapest, part of the population above all, it is important to forget this period of Soviet domination. It's the Hungarian nobility. In 1947, the communists confiscated all their property. Most have fled the country, leaving behind their family castles. Precisely today, at the castle of Fort, Near Budapest, we are celebrating an event. Traditional flags and clothing of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. We are celebrating the 90th birthday of Count Laszlo Kiroli. It is hot. One of the largest families in the Hungarian aristocracy. After fleeing the country for 50 years, he returned with his wife in the early 90s on his ancestral lands. It's the family church. The whole village came together to pay tribute to this family that ruled Budapest for 400 years. During Soviet rule, the Count went into exile in South America, then in England. But unlike other countries like the Czech Republic, Romania, or Slovakia, today the Hungarian law does not allow the return of confiscated property to its former owners Count Laszlo, lived here all his childhood. But today, to live there, he has to pay rent to the state several hundred euros each month. Are you happy living here? I am very happy. Because this is where I was born. This castle has been in the family since 1820. The Kurulius, there were a lot of them. They were the richest family in Hungary. But it doesn't belong to us anymore. Communists took everything from us. There was, no there was no refund. And what do you think about it? <laughs> what can we say? At least we live there. It's already that. 
However, I think that not giving us back these castles, that is not right on the part of the Hungarian government. When we came back here, there was nothing left. It was completely empty. It's Laszlo's great-grandmother, Clarissa. The castle was nationalized in 1947 and served as an orphanage for Hungarian children. Today, the ground floor is rented to a restaurant. The count and his wife occupy the first floor. If you would like to follow me, this is our small dining room. So come on. This is the gallery. During communism, it was supposed to be a kind of hall. The kids' rooms were there. I tried to arrange the rooms to be more user-friendly. Here, I like to organize concerts and cultural events. Oh my god, it's so hot in here. I'm going to faint. Have a cherry. They are delicious. They come from the castle. Good morning. Like them, at the fall of the USR, around 20% of Hungarian aristocrats have returned to their land after half a century of exile. Today, they meet up with each other for Count Caroli's birthday. None have been able to recover their castle, but surprisingly, in the last few years, families have the right to have their works of art returned. It is this man, Sigmund Peroni, who is in charge of this mission. We're going to Lake Balaton in August. Used to. Perfect. You will come to us. Thank you. Let's do it like that. His family fled communism in Sweden. Ten years ago, Sigmund came back to Budapest. This government official helped Karoli to recover their works of art seized at the time by Soviet soldiers. Both here. All the things that you see there with the mirror, and we gave all of this back to families. To get their property back, the Carolius had to follow a procedure. A restitution commission has been established in Hungary. If a family has proof, a picture or a book to prove it is good, if the commission has decided to give legality, it goes back to the families. This commission has existed since 2013. Until today, Sigmund was able to get his hands on only 5% of the objects who belonged to the Coraldi. The green living room. We gave the two back and here. And this one. It's really family property. We had great aristocratic families who were very rich with lots of stuff. 80% simply disappeared and is still on Russian territory today somewhere. We don't know where. With who? We don't know. Soldiers came and collected everything that was. Everything is in the Soviet Union. Almost all of their works are undoubtedly still today somewhere in Russia, and it will be impossible for this family to get them back. Marked by wars and various occupations, the face of Budapest is always in motion. Depending on the era, buildings change ownership and reinvent themselves. Everything is changing. Like these kids' pools, who became the best tables in a trendy bar.
symbol of the upheavals that the city experienced, the former Jewish quarter. Historically, it was one of the poorest areas in the city, a popular ghetto where 70,000 Jews lived. Most were deported as early as 1942, 20,000 were shot and thrown into the Danube. The buildings were completely bombed. Yet, 70 years later, it is here that every evening converges, Hungarian youth and tourists. The neighborhood has become a temple of celebration. We are in Budapest. The weather is super nice. Love this place. It's the first time I've been here. Over two square kilometers, there is an exceptional concentration, 800 bars and nightclubs. These French tourists have set their sights on one of the largest establishments in the neighborhood, an institution in the Hungarian capital. 2,500 square meters that look like a squat spread over two floors with nine bars. Each evening, more than 1,000 partygoers enjoy there until the end of the night. The prices are unbeagable. It's about six euros per cocktail. In France, in a bar that will be approximately like that, it would cost 10 euros. Compared to France, it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week nonstop. They're sick people. This establishment was the first to launch a quirky fashion, which can only be found in Budapest. The Ruins Bar. Installed in an abandoned factory, it is only decorated with recycled materials. Ceiling surgical lamp, graffiti on the walls, and bathtub as a couch. Here, the more extravagant, the better. Every time I come here, there is something new. Did you see that this thing was hanging? When it opened, the establishment was the first of its kind. Since then, he has been emulated all over the world. But in the old Jewish quarter, not everyone shares the enthusiasm of the party course. Starting with local residents, who are experiencing an ordeal because of the nocturnal noise. Go in, don't make noise. In this building, the atmosphere is not festive. Rita and her two neighbors are fed up. They set up a committee of local residents who is trying, with his small resources, to bring calm to the neighborhood. Shout in a residential area. In the middle of the night at 3 a.m. is not normal. Because of that, our life has changed. We don't sleep anymore. Rita is an English teacher. She lives with her son in this 80 square meters, purchased 20 years ago. At the time, everything was quiet. Today, as soon as it opens its double windows, she feels like she's in a nightclub. I was 25 when I moved here. I was 25 when I moved here. At that time, it was not like that. Not like this. It's not just the noise that bothers her. When she leaves home, the mother of the family must slalom between empty bottles of alcohol and drunken tourists. You don't film. I am being serious here. Look, one that no longer works straight. Have you seen that? It happens all the time. Alcohol is the main attraction in Budapest. Cheap alcohol. It's the same scenario every night. A sad sight, which makes the life of all residents impossible. A few tens of meters from its front door, a French tourist is in the middle of an alcoholic coma. Her friends are calling for help. If you have a blanket to put on him, you should call an ambulance. It's not for me to do it. You need to call him. We've already called them twice, and that's in 50 minutes. It's the same every night. 
The ambulance will arrive a few minutes later. Overwhelmed by all these outbursts, Rita fights a complicated fight. She wants to close the bars in her neighborhood at midnight. To prove that her life has gone hellish, she goes out every night to film her missteps. Hoping in this way to convince the authorities that it went too far. But his behavior is disturbing. It is regularly taken to task by the managers of establishments. Do you have permission to film? To film this kind of scene in front of my own building? Do you really think I should ask for permission? The security guys never want their establishment filmed. Retailers do everything they can to protect their very lucrative businesses. It must be said that tourists are a boom. They bring in tens of millions of euros per year. This janitor next door to Rita, it also has its share of problems to deal with. The other day, at 5 a.m., in the hallways, young Dutch people organized a competition to see who could urinate in my flower box. It's, a question of money. Whoever has it's just a question money of money, because they have more money. They think they can do what they want. You can afford a prostitute, drink on the street, shout loud and destroy people's lives if you have the money. Over the past 10 years, 8,000 residents have finally left the district. But since we shot, Rita has finally won her fight. Neighborhood bars will have to close at midnight. Something to maybe bring back a bit of calm in the alleys of the city center. As for tourists, they can always console themselves in a remote place, where the noise does not disturb anyone. This is the unmissable event that makes Budapest vibrate every summer, the Saget. After two editions canceled due to COVID, the biggest festival in Europe will be back next year. Rock, pop, electronic music. For one week, 600 concerts and thousands of shows follow one another without interruption 24 hours a day. Headliners like Rihanna bring in 600,000 young people from around the world. For France, this is the man responsible for transporting tourists, Andrach. Every summer, it charters dozens of buses, departing from all the major cities of France. These young people are coming from Nantes. They had to drive 19 hours in buses to get there. We wanted to get value for our money and have great memories. <laughs> the festival works in a vacuum, like the biggest theme parks. Food, camping, activities, everything is taken care of. Created in 1993, at the fall of the USR, the festival was originally a meeting place for young Hungarians who were thirsty for freedom after years of Cold War and dictatorship. Today, the rebellious spirit of the pioneers has disappeared. Half of the customers come from abroad and is more interested in the crazy side only through politics. At the beginning, the slogan was, we need a week together, we are the students. It was something that was offered for Hungarians for academics. It became a real war machine in the 2000s. Johan, 34, was drawn to the attractive price. 340 euros per week and the atmosphere, everything is allowed. He dreamed of music and bungee jumping, and here it's possible. You should have a nice view from up there, that's what I'm interested in. Count 60 euros for five minutes of adrenaline. I am not at all serene. Why did I do that? I don't want to do it.
a leap into the void of 60 meters. I thought I wouldn't do it. I did it. When it comes to unique experiences, there are even better in Saigit. The festival is known for its libertarian side, maybe libertine. Here we can get married for five minutes, or for a week, for the duration of the festival. Fake wedding ceremonies are a local specialty. A friend of Johan's Jimmy, the single member of the gang has apparently just found a soulmate. Without transition. Do you want to marry me? Yes. He puts the ring on his finger. For 50 euros, here they are festival husband and wife, thanks to this fake marriage contract. It's almost true. But in this very conservative country, this liberal festival is disturbing. Between the party goers and some Hungarians, it's the clash of cultures. This afternoon, at the entrance to Saigit, demonstrators are playing trouble. These young people are part of a well-known far-right group in Hungary. Her name, Manihasek, in French, or Homeland. At the source of their anger, this Coca-Cola commercial, the main sponsor of the festival. Placarded all over the city, it shows gay couples hugging each other. Intolerable for these preservatives, who do not hesitate to mix between homosexuality and pedophilia. Their response hijacked the brand logo by insinuating that Coca could soon promote pedophilia. We are protesting against the Coca-Cola campaign, which seeks to popularize these deviances. We distribute flyers in front of the entrance to Saget to draw attention to the harmful consequences of this campaign. By doing that, Coca-Cola is not in its role as a brand. We condemn this campaign. A few days later, we are meeting these activists at one of their gatherings. Here, no international stars, but rather local folklore and old-fashioned rides. We celebrate there as a family, a certain idea of eternal Hungary. That's the flag of the first kings of Hungary. On the program, conferences on nationalist themes and conspiracy theorists. We know that the government and the opposition are run secretly by the same Freemason Lodge. And all kinds of war propaganda, like these children's toys, or these books in honor of the former Hungarian dictator, ally of Adolf Hitler in 39 to 45. They are patriotic books. Here, we don't hide our nostalgia for an imperial Hungary which dominated Central Europe. And there are many slip-ups. Here, the party's youth manager smiling at Nazi greetings. In France, these actions could be condemned for inciting racial hatred. In this video, the leader of the movement, Laszlo Torskai, promotes self-defense weapons. Guns can be purchased without authorization to defend your home or protect your property. And if you prefer more traditional ways, take this beautiful museum piece. Other targets are the Roma, and here too, they pour into the amalgam. Roma chiefs, police officers, and researchers have all confirmed that we can make the link between theft and the Roma community. If we don't talk about this frankly, it is also an ethnic problem. As for the Roma chiefs, instead of lining their pockets, they had better admit it and deal with this problem in their community. These remarks are reprehensible, but they do not shock anyone here. And he goes on to his other preoccupation of the moment. We don't want Coca-Cola here. The manager of the youth branch explains to us what bothers him so much in these photos of gay couples. 
It's something we don't accept because these posters have been seen by many children. I think homosexuality should not appear on the street. Coca-Cola should not get involved in politics and remove its posters. It is the first stage of liberal thinking which is slowly interfering with society. Maybe the next step will be acceptance of pedophilia. The leader of the movement went even further by calling for a boycott of the brand in front of a manufacturing plant famous bottles. Coke Zero, Zero Homosexual Propaganda. In France, this type of speech would fall under the law and would be convicted. But here, these demands have been heard all the way to the highest peak in the state. The Hungarian courts ruled in the right of the activists ordering Coca-Cola to remove its posters and to pay a fine of 1,500 euros. It was only the first step in a very controversial policy with respect to the homosexual community. Last month, the country led by Viktor Orban passed a law that completely prohibits any depiction of homosexuality in books, on TV, and in movies. Under the pretext of wanting to protect family values. I defended freedom under Soviet occupation. Homosexuality was punishable at the time and I fought for their rights so I defend gay rights. It's not against them. Above all, it aims to protect children and families. The country's leader has his own conception of gay rights. He doesn't want to see or hear them. Gay marriage is forbidden, as well as gender change in civil status. The LGBT community, outraged, showed its opposition. On several occasions in front of parliament, but that did not change the government's beliefs. So in Hungary, Many couples are worried more and more for their future in this country. There is water in there. Thank you. Please, my love. Like Tamara and Elvira, she mails these female car factory workers met six years ago. It's true love. I always say that I won the lottery jackpot with her. The couple dreams of living their love story out in the open, but things keep getting complicated. Only Elvira was able to change the gender on her identity papers just in time. Because a year later, the law changed and Tamara couldn't do it. My ID card. I have a feminine name, Elvira Margarita Engel. And I am registered as a woman, as shown in this number here. On mine, there is a photo of a woman as in life. Unfortunately, it is my birth name that is entered. A man's first Thomas. That makes my life a bit difficult. In their misery, they were able to get married almost because of a misunderstanding, because Alvar has become a woman. Since Tamara is still a man in the eyes of the administration, their marriage is therefore authorized, unlike same-sex unions. We asked the city hall if they had a problem with it, to both be dressed like women. They accepted. Yet in our suburbs, people are quite traditional. We invited our friends and we celebrated our wedding. At home or on the streets of Budapest, the couple wants to show off freely, like tonight, in one of the trendy districts of the capital, where their presence does not shock anyone. We're holding hands in front of everyone. You don't mind? I dare to do it. Elvara and Tamara are fighting to be accepted, not to be judged. We have traveled all over Hungary, and we had very few hostile reactions, almost no insults. But the couple fears that now, because of this new law promoted by the Orban government, things are not changing. 
With this law, we have no idea what will happen to us. I am scared. When I went out on the street, when I saw a child or a teenager, my appearance could be considered dangerous and I could get punished for it. For example, I couldn't even take Tamara's hand on the street anymore. It could get too risky. Do you think you should leave Hungary? No, you have to stay, show that we have the right to live here, keep fighting. If everyone leaves, who will win the fight? In this city, where communities are increasingly competing, there is another field that crystallizes the tension's real estate. The city center has long been popular, cheap. Today, it is coveted by real estate magnates and foreign investors, attracted by the very advantageous taxation. But their plans are very controversial. Here is the latest one. 22 hectares of high-end shops and housing embedded between century-old buildings in the city center. The neighborhood used to look like this, but the town hall entrusted it to a developer specializing in urban renewal. He built 2,400 apartments there, most sold in record time on map. They are the pride of Tibor, the CEO of the renovation company. This is one of our standard apartments of approximately 85 square meters, not to mention the terrace. There are three bedrooms and a living room. Its value, depending on the market, is around 350,000 euros. We sold it two years ago, and the customer asks us to rent it. So we furnish it, rent it, and manage it for our investors. And to think that this district was one of the worst famous in Budapest. Today, the price per square meter is close to 4,000 euros, 30% more expensive than the city average. But these apartments delight wealthy families and investors. Except that to get there, we had to dislodge thousands of inhabitants. There were 1,100 families who had to leave and there was never a scandal. They all accepted our offer and were happy to leave this neighborhood with money in their pockets. But not everyone has the same version of this story. This morning, local residents expressed their anger. Everyone has the right to housing. They are the first victims of real estate projects. Expropriated, not all of inhabitants have the means to relocate to the city because prices have exploded. Most of them is, however, perfectly inserted, like Peter. Whose city is it? To everyone. What do we want? A place to stay? At 31, for when? his father works for the city now. of Budapest as a cleaner. He is protesting today because he lives under the constant threat of expulsion. He has lived here for 13 years. He owns this dilapidated complex of buildings, a slum in the heart of the capital. Social housing that has been owned by the city for 50 years, but the town hall has stopped maintaining them because it only wants one thing sell them to the highest bidder. Outside, because of the rubbish on the ground, it's like being in a dump. Come on, come here. Peter hardly dares to walk his dog there. You see, there are shards of glass everywhere. If a child were to play here, he would risk killing himself. This morning, despite his vigilance, the animal will pay the price. Damn it, we have a problem. He cut his paw. The cut is important. Peter returns to his wife to take care of the animal. We have betaying, you give it to me. Thankfully, it didn't happen to the kids. That's why we don't let them get off. 
There are people who throw anything out the window, even rubbish. He owns this tiny apartment where he lives with his wife Bernadette and their three children. 25 square meters in total with a small kitchen. This living room, which also acts as a bedroom and a micro bathroom, it's small, but Peter is attached to it. It's the only thing they have. Today, the municipality wants to expropriate it to rehabilitate the neighborhood, and she offered him 16,000 euros to buy his property. That's the letter they sent me. They want to buy our apartment, but the price they're offering us is an insult. It's unacceptable. With 16,000 euros, you can't even buy a garage. So an apartment is not worth thinking about. 13 years ago, Peter paid for his apartment 7,000 euros. According to him, given the market prices, it would be worth at least 37,000 today. Twice as much as what the city council is offering. I don't want their charity, they can put me on the street. I will never accept this injustice. Peter and his neighbors are resisting and hope that the promoters will end up paying the right price so that he can rehouse his family with dignity. The city is entering modernity at a forced pace, a modernity that remains relative, even if it has become an essential tourism capital. 30 years after the fall of communism, Budapest remains troubled by these contradictions, still looking for his new identity and its place within the European Union. <laughs>